Hello, lovelies. Welcome back to the Golden Butterfly channel. Today, I want to discuss with you the brand new stand-up special from Hassan Minaj called The King's Jester. It just came out October 4th on Netflix, and it is something that is riveting. I found it really witty. I found his sense of humor brilliant. It was very vulnerable, very insightful, very open. Five years ago, he did The Homecoming King about his past dating life in high school and the trials and tribulations that he learned from that experience. And this time he's talking more so about his family, his show, The Patriot Act, and what he's doing now, more so focused on his family and his uh, relation, his, his religion, he's a Muslim. And uh, I just really commend him for being so open and personal because he starts out the special talking about his own personal infertility issues. And I cannot think of one male comedian off the top of my head that I could picture sharing such a personal matter with such a wide audience. And so, yeah, that's very private. And a lot of people, there's a, there's a huge stigma you know, attached to fertility and manhood. And I really commend him for being so raw. And he discusses the difference between MDs versus DOs, doctor of osteopathic medicine versus a medical doctor. And it's funny because he ties it into his personal issues trying to plan a family with his wife, Bina, who has her PhD. And he was born and raised in Sacramento, I think, somewhere in California, maybe it's San Diego. Sorry, Hassan, if I got the city wrong, but he was born and raised in California, that I do know. His parents immigrated from India, so he's first generation American. And he has a friend <laughs> who became a doctor in New York. And he is, and while he's seeking treatment with his wife for his infertility issues, he, he finds out that it is his friend from California practicing medicine in New York. And his friend is a DO. So he makes this really long spiel and has a call back actually in the middle of the show about DOs versus MDs. And he goes as far as to say that, you know, the MDs have the front row seats and the DOs are in the back. And his friend is just basically telling him, hey, you know, you have to have this surgery. You have too much blood flow in your private area, your region, your genitalia. And if you don't have it corrected, then you won't be able to have children. So his friend performs a surgery, his wife and, and him successfully conceived their daughter. And he goes on, he shows a picture of his beautiful baby girl. And he takes the show and tells the story. He's a masterful storyteller about growing up with his father. And he brings up his father a lot, actually, more so than his mom in many of his shows, but his father and, and him were at the mosque, worshiping, practicing Islam. And he said he was, meet, he was met there by a man, a large uh, gentleman with blue eyes. And he said he was really like strong and he looked like he was on steroids. His name was Brother Eric. Long story short, come to find out, he was telling his dad that this guy feels really off to him. And his father, as an immigrant trying to be hospitable, inv invites Brother Eric to their house. And I won't give it away. You guys will have to watch it for yourself because, like I said, I don't like to include spoilers, but Hassan and his gut feeling eventually proved true. And he'll tell you that later in the special. 
So moving along, he also talks about when he was in school, as he grew older and grew to prominence in his comedy career, he was a correspondent on The Daily Show as well before going and doing his own stand-up. He said that someone asked him, you know, if you could be a different race for one day, what is something that you would do as a person of a different race? And he said that if I were a person of a different race, I would run through an airport. And you guys, my mouth just dropped open because I've, <laughs> you know, and I know we all have different privileges and I have never even given my status or even thought twice about running for an airport, you know, whether it was my own poor time management or, you know, the airlines um, screw up or having the, the delayed flights or whatever the case may be, I have run through plenty of airports domestic and internationally. And when he said that, I was just like, I just paused and I was thinking to myself, wow, the way that we all navigate this world so differently, because as human beings, we need safety. You know, going back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, that's basic psychology 101. You know, human beings, we need food and water and shelter and, you know, to use the bathroom and safety is a Maslow one level basic need, right? And that's before we move up to, you know, having a social status and belonging and love and moving up to self-actualization, which is at the pinnacle of our hierarchy of needs. But just to feel safe enough, and the fact that he was born and raised in California, it just, it gave me pause. So it was really insightful. And uh, he, again, goes into more details and goes into a, a furthermore in his story about getting slammed on top of a police car as a young boy and telling his first successful joke in the midst of that trauma and kudos to Hassan because like I said, I know a lot of comedy is rooted in pain and as a coping mechanism, but he also discusses a young man who is the same age as him. And during the time after 9-11, the Patriot Act was formed and they were forcing young kids, teenagers, to give false confessions about domestic terrorism. And most of these young men, you know, had brown skin and they were practicing Islam, they were practicing Muslims. And they would force these young men to give false confessions regarding having ties to do with 9-11 or having ties to do with some kind of Al-Qaeda or some kind of terrorist group. And they would try them as adults and put them in prison all over the country, okay? This was happening all over the U.S. And it broke my heart. And he goes into detail about why he named his show The Patriot Act and why he, his, his episode about Saudi Arabia actually got banned and he got a lawsuit. And I mean, it was just a lot of trouble that he got into about telling the truth. Like there's nothing more powerful than the truth. And it's not something that I take for granted that in the United States we're protected by freedom of speech. It's not global. We're protected by, you know, we have the media as protected. And, and even as a comedian, there is a set of laws and governance that he goes into detail about citing his lawyer and he shows the letters and he shows the lawsuits on the green screen to illustrate the language 
and the legal jargon that he's protected behind as a comedian because people really went at him hard. And his wife was telling him, you know, don't put your family in danger. Don't force my hand because I'll take our children and leave. And he goes into more detail about that. It's really, really good, you guys. Um, like I said, I don't want to give away spoilers. So I really want to just pique your interest and give you kind of a, a really quick synopsis on what The King's Jester is about. And I think that I've done that. Hopefully you guys will have a chance to watch it. But it just gives you an insight into not only his life and his struggles, but his triumphs. And so, and his his brilliant way of weaving the story of his life so far. So hats off to Hassan Minaj. Go see The King's Jester and drop down in the comments. Let me know if you guys like it. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk with you lovelies later. Bye.